Welcome to the Bringing Business to Retail podcast, where I, Selena Knight, share strategies, interview retail revolutionaries, and delve into the minds of e-commerce experts to help you grow a profitable, independent retail or e-commerce business. If you're stuck in a rut, or if you feel like business is way harder than it should be, or you've overachieved all of the things that you've set out to and are wondering what to do next, or how do I even make this better? I know that you're going to love today's episode. If you're stuck in a rut, feel like business is way harder than it should be, or you've achieved all of the things that you set out to and are wondering what next, or how do I even make this better? Then I know that you're going to love today's episode. Hey there, thank you so much for joining me on the Bringing Business to Retail podcast today. I'm a little bit excited today because in the last few days, I went on a bit of a shopping spree. I decided I needed to hack my office. And this all happened because I was putting stuff off that I knew I really needed to do. I was holding my team back because they were waiting for some videos that I needed to record. And yet, I just kept putting them off because it meant I had to get out the lights. I had to get out the teleprompter. I had to do my hair. I had to put some makeup on. I had to put the backdrop up. I had to set all of the camera and everything up. And day after day after day, I just put it off until it got to the point where the team needed it like yesterday. And so I decided that what I needed to do was just hack my office so that if I ever needed to do video, I literally just had to put some makeup on and start recording. And so I did. This was, let's be honest, true procrastination. Any excuse because I just couldn't be bothered getting all of the bits and pieces out. So I went and did some investigating on Amazon and bought myself a teleprompter. And the only reason I bought it on Amazon is because it was delivered the same day. It was here by the the afternoon. And then One of the biggest problems I've had is putting up the backdrop. So to put it up, I have to go and hang some some of these hooks on the ceiling and then I have to go and grab the backdrop. I have to stick it all together, unroll it. And by then, I'm usually so bloody exhausted by the time I've put all this stuff out, I just can't be bothered. So I decided no more, no more excuses. There's always an excuse to not record videos. And it's not even the fact that I don't want to record the videos. It's the getting it ready. That is what I don't like. And so I bought, a, I did hack this. I bought a roller blind and I screwed it to the roof. And then I taped my backdrop to the roller blind. Now it makes it sound easy. It actually wasn't that easy. It wasn't as easy as it sounds because the roller blind is 2.5 meters long. So what's that? I'm going with like eight or nine feet long. And I discovered when you roll it back up again, it all crinkles up. So I had to find a space in the house big enough, stretch it all out and then work backwards, which is kind of one of the things that we do in our business anyway, and work backwards by working my way from the end back to the beginning and then taping it all up. I had to get, get some help from Ed to do this and then remounting it on the roof and OMG, it has changed my life. It is amazing when you actually spend a little bit of money to make your life easier. I mean, all up, I think I spent $130, like not a lot of money at all. And now I'm like, video, sure, let me go put some makeup on. I went and recorded five videos on the weekend because all I had to do was unwind the roller blade, uh, the roller blade, unwind the roller blind and stick my camera and sorry, not my camera, stick my phone and my iPad in the teleprompter and bang, I was ready to go. And I know this happens a lot in business. It happens a lot in life. If every, if something is too hard, if all the bits and pieces, if every step of the way, it just feels like it's too difficult, then we don't do it. I mean, no one wants to slog through the mud to get to the other side. But sometimes when we just make a few changes, when we spend just a little bit of money, life becomes so much easier. So I don't know that that actually has anything to do with today's episode. If you joined me last week, if you didn't join me last week, you need to go and listen to last week's episode first, because this is a two-parter and you need to know the background of how Victoria has built this half a billion dollar jewelry empire And at the end of last week's episode, 
we were talking about how she was going to go into retirement. And as I'm sure you can already imagine, that didn't happen. So here is what happened next. Now, before we jump in, if you are listening to this live, I'm hosting a live masterclass. It's all brand new on how to scale to seven figures and beyond. I'll be holding it this Thursday and Friday. So when this goes live and Friday, Sydney time. And if you can't come live, make sure you register because you will get the replay. So I totally understand different time zones. Last minute, if you're listening to this live, maybe you didn't know about it. Go and register over at selenanight.com forward slash masterclass and grab your spot. And if you can't come live, I will send you the replay. So let's jump into today's episode with Victoria Wick part two on how she built a half a billion dollar jewelry empire. You are going to love this. We had timed my exit to, because it, I, had a, I had a 10 year contract, the last one. And the grand finale show was supposed to be the, the last show. But I had sold out of everything the month before, so I didn't come back to do the grand finale show. So, so it's basically 20 years. Um, and then I retired there because, you know, I just wanted to, now my daughter is having a baby and I wanted to just kind of like check out of everything and do my thing because I, you know, the other things like when you're in creative field like this, you never know how long you are, you're desirable. You're going to be right? relevant. Yeah. Right, exactly. So I just wanted to get out. You know, I didn't want to sign a whole new long contract. So I, I left, wrote a fiction, had a lot of fun with that. I, I designed my daughter's wedding and all that. So all that was great. And then I was really bored. But luckily, the CEO of the current network that I'm on now, Shop HQ, said, you know what? And he's a, he actually was at HSN at one point. And he said, you know, I understand you don't want to work like the same pace that you were doing before but we will take you whether you want to work two hours a month or 20 hours a month, you know, we'd like to have, you know, a little bit of you. So I'm back on TV now. So that's the whole circle from zero to where I am. How did you, or was, were there any, um, any, any rubs, any conflict between someone like Nordstrom and Saks when you went on to the home shopping channels? Because it's yeah. a very yeah. different demographic yeah. that they're targeting. Absolutely. So um, first up, first of all, from the product point of view, you develop two completely different products, right? Yeah. Different price point, different products, different stories, um, all that. I also had two different brands um, on HSN, on TV, and it was completely by accident. I ended up this way, but in the regular regular stores, my um, brand, I had several brands. I mean, I did three things. I did like generic design work for other companies mm -hmm. where my name didn't show, my brand name didn't show. Okay. I, I quit that after a little while. But, and then I had my own brand, which was called Rebello Beverly Hills. And that one was with my department store brand. And then when HSN called me, uh, I had uh, trademarked a brand name called Diamond L instead of like Diamondique, we had Diamond L, which I thought was really pretty. Then uh, QVC actually quite objected to this. Uh, so while they're sorting it out, nobody wanted to get sued or anything like this. So while they're sorting it out, they said, okay, you know what? You, we can always get a trademark under your own name. So we'll just call this Victoria Wood Collection until we find out the trademark for mm -hmm. your TV brand. Yeah. Well, the Victoria Wood Collection was so successful and so impactful, they didn't want anything else. So it stayed that way. So I did separate all the different, you know, brands. So I own, I mean, many, many um, brand names. Isn't it funny that it all came back to you being the brand again, when that was something did, that you were shying away from right from the beginning? It did, yeah. I did. And, I so resisted it too. And so let's just quickly circle back to, you said you wanted to come back to goal setting. Can you tell mm. us a little bit more about, how important that was in your growth because you've you've seen yeah. so much like you were at the forefront of home shopping channel you were at the right. forefront of women being in positions yeah, of management that's true. you've mm -hmm. seen the internet you've seen e-commerce you've seen how fast we've moved in these last 12 months right how has goal setting and how do you still use it to grow your business yeah. okay this is really important okay so I'm going to ex explain to you something and all of us women can relate to. Let's say you're in COVID and you want to lose 10 pounds, right? 
I'm just going to, cause it's, this is universal language. Mm -hmm. And you say to yourself, you know what? I gained a few pounds and you know, I could just lose. I, I just wish I could lose 10 pounds. And I'm going to really do that because I got all this time now and I'm going to just lose 10 pounds and I'm serious this time. I've done it before, but this time I'm going to actually eat less and I'm going to be a little bit more careful about what I put in my body and I'm going to exercise more. So I'm going to lose 10 pounds. Okay. So this is one way you set a goal. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, you know, everybody says be specific. Okay. Well, you were specific 10 pounds, 10 pounds. you're going to eat less and you're going to do all that. Okay. Well, that's not enough. If you said, I'm going to lose 10 pounds in the next 10 weeks, you, you've now broken down to one pound a week. Yes. For 10 weeks. You can right? work backwards. And then you say, and the way I'm going to do that, I know myself, I don't want to cut out whole food groups. I don't want to, you know, go look up a dictionary to see if this is healthy for me or not, whatever. I'm going to cut out 300 calories a day. And that means a soda or a piece of bread or both. Okay. Or even half of it, or maybe a small portion of it, but I'm going to cut out 300 uh, calories a day. And I'm going to also walk my dog for 45 minutes a day. Yeah. Okay. Now you are there. That's manageable. Right. But it's also giving you choices. What I've loved about yes. that is you've said, uh, this is how I'm going to do it. Right. This is what I'm, sorry, this is what I'm going to do it. How I'm going to do it can be flexible. I can choose today to, to not have the soda or today I can choose to not have cheese, but it's or not bread. saying, yeah. or bread. Or it's bread. not mm -hmm. so regimented that you feel like you're giving everything up. Right. Now I love that, that you've got choices. That's true. And the other thing too is, Let's say you're celebrating with your family and you can't cut out 300 you know, calories today and you're not going to walk the dog today because, you know, you're, you've got something to celebrate about. That's great. But you know what? You, you can put a check mark in your brain tomorrow. Maybe I'll maybe tomorrow I'll do 450 calories. Yeah. You know, for the next two days. Or I'll walk the dog so, for an extra 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And or maybe you don't walk the Yeah. You don't walk the dog for 45 minutes, but maybe you do 10 minutes. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's manageable. And so it's, you, it's highly unlikely you're going to have a complete failure. Yeah. So now in my $3,000 goal, I said, okay, I want to do $3,000, which means I want to get about $7,000, $7,500 in revenue. Cause I had no expenses. Remember, mm -hmm. you know, I had no, I don't rent to the apartment. I had to live there. So yeah. <laughs> there was no extra expenses going on. So the $7,000, and how was I going to get there? I did the, the 50 um, letters every day. I also went to the Nordstrom and I did trunk shows there. Mm -hmm. And the, by the way, trunk shows, you get a direct, a, a real one-on-one -on -one interaction with people. And you do get a lot of feedback from a direct consumer, which then I use to tweak my new designs and so forth. So, you know, I, basically that m number was, and then also what am I willing to do to do that? So Money was there, but then time. So yep. time today, and I'm not going to go walk back to, you know, the days when we didn't have fax machines and all that other stuff. So today, if you were running a business and you wanted to make $3,000 a month, you say, okay, well, what, what is a realistic way I could actually generate the 7,000 bucks a month? You could say, you know what? I'm willing to work 20 hours a week for my, for my business and say, I, I have a corporate job. I'm still getting paid a little bit of money for my corporate job. I'm going to ditch it as soon as I get, you know, something going. But in the meantime, I can put in 20 hours a week. So let's say you say to yourself, um, I can do social media for an hour and a half a week. We're talking a week. Mm -hmm. That means for three days a, a week, three days, for 30 minutes a day, I could post something on my social media. Now, if you are posting three times a week and I'm giving you 30 minutes, that's a lot of time. <laughs> you know, yeah, it is. It's a lot of time. I can you do an awful lot in 30 minutes. Yeah, exactly. So you can research what they're doing. You can come up with content. You can create a little video, whatever you do. It's completely reasonable to do three days a week. So that's an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And then if you say, you know, I'm going to find some leads. And that lead doesn't have to be actual name or someone. It could be you researching to find out, you know, what kind of companies are going to buy my stuff. Go on the internet, you know, do three days a week of 30 minutes a day. That's three hours. Now we're, you're doing researching, you're doing post, that's now three hours total a week, right? Yeah. So if you're looking at a day, that could be an hour a day, three, 
three, three days. days a week. Yeah. So then you you do if you do you know eventually at some point you are going to have some names to to write letters to or emails to you write emails for you know two hours uh, you know a week if you add these things up you break down to you know and then you can't believe those twenty hours a week is a lot of time I love that we it's a lot of time. we call that specific action. So it's right. not busy for the sake of being busy. And, and right. we, we have a 90-day plan where people write down and they say, how long do I expect this to take? Because all of a sudden you either mm-hmm. see that you've tried to give yourself 20 hours work for one day and that's why your to-do list never gets crossed off. Or all right. of a sudden you go, actually, there was only four real hours of work. What the heck did I do for the other four hours? Exactly, exactly. So when you do this and then you do, let's say, an hour a week of follow-up, So here's another thing I love about this too is how many times do you know that, I mean, and you and I both know people like this, you know, you get a letter and you go, you know what, that Selena chick sounds really interesting. And she sent me a really nice thing, but I'm going to see if, you know, how long it takes for it to follow up. Yeah. Well, you never follow up. You're never going to get the business, right? Because people want to know you're hungry. And it's the same as emailing your, like communicating with your customers. If you send one email that does quite well, why the heck aren't you resending it to the people who didn't open it? Like it's the follow through. (laughs) Yeah. So if you do follow through, so the fact that you've got a task named titled follow through. Mm -hmm. So when you're checking it off, it's designed so that you're actually, you know, accomplishing multiple facets of your goal, but that goal has to be that specific broken down and it needs to be manageable and trackable. Right. So when you do that, it actually makes a lot of sense. Now, when it comes to goal setting, let me just tell you the most important thing about goal setting in a small business is this. When I went through the MBA school, they teach you some really fancy ways, software, uh, emotional connection, all this stuff to, and discipline, all of the different ways you set goals. And I've heard model after model after model of setting goals, you know, track them, be accountable, you know, all that stuff. It's great. But the reality is this. Right now in corporate America, if you set, let's say, um, you know, our our division will accomplish a 15% increase. Let's say you're selling dental equipment and you say our division is going to accomplish 15% more in year 2021. Okay. And you don't meet that. You don't meet it. There's COVID, whatever. You don't meet it. And so let's say instead of 15% increase, you actually have a 10% decrease. Well, in corporate America, you might actually get promoted because you only decrease 10% <laughs> in the middle of COVID, <laughs> or you, you're a really good talker and you get, you know, be in charge of whatever, or, you know, you might even get fired or you might get demoted. But if you do this in your own business, the chances of you going bankrupt is pretty high. Mm. Yeah. You might just go bankrupt if you don't make it, right? So yeah. when you set your goal, make sure that you manage that risk factor. You know, don't, they say, the other thing is that go, go uh, another thing I love is like, oh, set your goals high, you know, be aspirational. Well, great, but you need to make sure that <laughs> you really understand the risk factor because, cor- you know, when you go, if you're working in corporate America right now and you are used to setting goals in your company for your division and you're a team member of 50 or 20, you are like, a little, a little screw in a, a system. little cog, yeah, a little cog yeah. in the and, giant and you're, machine. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're designed to be plugged into a system. Well, that system doesn't work for you in your business when it's your business. No, especially when you so, set, you have to step up and be the CEO. If you aren't taking that leadership role, right. then you you are the machine. You are the the engine that's driving the machine. You're so if everything. you fail, everything yeah. fails. Yeah. So that, I think that's really important, but, and when it comes to goal setting, break it down and see, because when you set your goal and you say, you know what, I'm doing all this and I can tell that 20 hours isn't enough. I need to spend 30 hours. You're going to know that day one, when you set that. And you can choose, you can choose whether you're going to invest in someone else to pick up the 10 hours or do you take the 10 hours? Exactly. So yeah, that's, that's, I'm glad you revisited that for me. Okay. So what is the future for the Victoria Wick collection and Victoria Wick, the person like you've achieved so much. You should be so proud of yourself. I'm sure you are very proud of yourself, but I don't, 
I don't feel like you're the kind of person who can just sit still. Yeah, I tried retiring three times. And you know, each time, <laughs> each time I retired, I get my business actually grew bigger and bigger. So this time I actually, what I want to do is I'm actually now working on my legacy. And I don't want people to think, oh my gosh, she thinks she's so great that she's going to do her legacy. That is not true at all. I think that when I listen to people read my bio, like I do a lot of you know keynote speaking and you know so forth, and they go through this extensive um, reading of my bio. And when they do that, it almost seems like it's a different person than I am. It, it seems like, no, well, that's not me because I never set out to do all these things. I wanted to just sit at home, spend a little money, you know, like make a little money, uh, be a great mom, I, you know, be a great designer. You know, I worked hard for my dream, but I never once thought I was going to be a millionaire or, you know, I was going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. I never, that was never my goal. The money just came whether I liked it or not. And the more I shoot, you know, the more I just tried to shut down, the money came faster. So I think what I want to do now is when I say I want to work on my legacy is that whether you're in Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, America, Russia, it's all up to you and everything is possible, everything. And if you listen to my story today, there was nothing extraordinary. Think about what I said. Every single thing I said was just using common sense, mostly. Yeah. I, I didn't innovate anything. I don't have, you know, I'm not a scientist. I didn't invent a light bulb. Um, I didn't run into some unicorn. I mean, it's just, just small changes. Uh, what, one last thing before I even get to the whole thing on this, too, and I, this is a very important point. If you're in retail, if you're in any business that require customers of any kind, which is 99.9% of the, of the business, <laughs> think about this one critical thing. And I think if I can go back and look at the one thing that caused this whole thing, the one thing, one common thread between when I was really poor to when, what I am now is... In the MBA school, they teach you the most powerful word in marketing is free. And then the second most power word, powerful word in marketing is new and improved. Those are not true. The most powerful word in marketing is the word you. You. Oh, I'm glad that you said that because I, I thought you were going to ask me. I was going to say you. It's the word you. And many of you, uh, you know, if you're listening uh, in Australia, and I know you have a, a channel called uh, TSVN or something. If you listen to people on TV talk, just watch it uh, a little bit and you'll see the person's intention. So like when I'm on TV, I could say something like, um, you know, a lot of people, I see, I see so many people on TV come and go. So most people who come on TV only last like two shows. So when they come on and they say, say you're selling jewelry and you say, you know, I just love the summertime and, you know, I love all the blues and just love the ocean, love the blue skies. And I just can't wait to get out. And I designed this beautiful collection for all of you, just, just, just so that, you know, you, you can all live life. And you know what, in, as a matter of fact, the other day, I wore, I wore my, this necklace and those earrings. And you know, what? I got a ton of compliments from all my friends and you know what? So it's all about it's the, greatest the presenter. Thing. Okay. So you say that it's all about you, right? And you do a lot of people say these things not because they are egotistical, but because they think that they have to establish their authority. They think they have to tell people, I want all these awards and all this stuff. But if you say it the other way and you say, you know what? Welcome to, you know, welcome to my show. Thank you so much for inviting me to your living room. It's such a privilege to be here with you. And guess what? Summertime is here. Aren't you so glad that you can finally get to live your life? I have designed this wonderful collection for you so that when you go out on your lake, when you go out with your you know, uh, family at barbecue and you're glowing with that radiant smile and everybody's, all the eyes are on you. You're gonna feel like a million bucks. You're sparkling. You're you know, getting all this attention and you get to do all of this with the, with the a down payment of $20 today. It makes you look so smart. And guess what? When you're done with that, you get to leave it to your daughters or to your granddaughters. And they're going to wonder what kind of a person Selena was because she had to be a really, really smart woman with an excellent taste. I want to buy one. That's, <laughs> it's a what very is this thing? thing right? I want it. <laughs> 
So, you know, it doesn't matter what you're selling, you want it, right? Because yeah. you're in the know. So think about that. So like my legacy now, you know, what I want to leave is that all of you who are listening to me right now, I know that you're trying hard. You, if you had information like that, how you sound at the other end, how you should be talking to your customers and those little changes, like understanding that customer wants choice, like six and a half inch bracelet versus seven, seven. Eight. I mean, if you ask anybody, what size bracelet do you wear? Most people don't know what size they wear. No. We don't walk around with that. You shouldn't go to your store and go, you know, today just wasn't my day because I don't fit in that bracelet. You should be able to feel good about, you know, walking in there or going out because if you have to come back four weeks later, you just lost a moment. Because mm. we're not selling the piece, we're selling the sizzle, we're selling the emotion, we're selling, you know, what it could be, we're selling, you know, so understanding, putting your customer first in everything you do. And I know that in retail, we preach it. I've been in retail stores where, you know, they have names for their customers, you know, our ideal customer's name is Joanna, or she's this, or she's that. And yet, they don't actually do the things that matter to the customer. You have to, you have, it's little actions. Yeah. And, and everything I said today, Selena, every single thing I said, don't cost money. No. And, and it's so important because we, we have a, a growth tool called Scale Your Store and we have a conversation with every single person who comes in because we want to be able to find out what drew them to the product. What do they right. actually need? Because if there's something that yeah. is coming up over and over again, that's not there, we will right. create it. Absolutely. If they Absolutely. came thinking that they were going to get the answers to X and mm -hmm. we're not giving them answers to X, we need to give them the answers to X. Right. Exactly. So I created the Million Dollar Hobbies podcast. And right now, um, all my guests have been like personal friends of mine and people that have very similar stories to mine. They've mm -hmm. taken whatever their passions are and they've grown it to a multi-million dollar business. Um, I've got a woman that's going to be released like next week you know, she, she's in skincare and I think her business is like well over a hundred million dollars today. And it, it's a story is really compelling. So a lot of the people that are on the million dollar hobbies podcast have kind of experienced this, but what I want to do though, eventually with this whole project is to be able to bring on like four or five dreamers that have just started a business. And I want to be able to diagnose it almost like a shark tank. Um, you know, when I go live stream, because yes. I can see the holes in their business plan, or I could see where they, they're going to run into problems because I, you know, remember someone like me or you, uh, Selena, like we've walked the walk just a few steps before you. Yeah. So, you know, trust me, that road was not easy. Um, <laughs> I, I sit here, you know, acting like it was just not that difficult, but there were times when you really think, oh my God, is this it? Like, everybody says, you know, people are out of business the first, you know, year. And then the, you know, and I'm thinking I'm, I'm year three. And is this how am I going to go broke? Or is, am I going to go broke, go broke or grow broke? Whatever it is, like, what, what am I doing here? And the, the one, have, when you get to seven figures, it's all magically going to become easier. I can tell you, not. it doesn't. <laughs> the stress level is much higher and, and the stakes are bigger and people get nastier. So I just want to, you know, when I came on your show, it isn't to sell, you know, books or, you know, anything like that. It's really to share my experience with you because it's, it's my way of paying it forward. And to, you know, when we talk about motivating people, inspiring people, encouraging people, empowering, all of these words are great. But what I want to do today is I want you to, when you're done listening to me right now, go home and go back to thinking about the one tiny thing you could do today. Yeah. That one tiny thing is going to cause two tiny things tomorrow, which is going to cause to cause you a small thing the next day. And then eventually you are going to lose that 10 pounds or whatever it is. And, and then you, you, you look back and go, geez, that was so easy. Yeah. Right. So, and, and, you know, and get a mentor or, you know, get, listen to podcasts like yours and mine. And I did write a book, which is uh, not going to be released until 2022. Um, I was going to always self-publish that book and I was all ready to publish it. And I, I even have a sign up sheet on my, my website, but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go pitch it to a couple of agents to see if I can some feedback, like just great feedback to say, oh, your title sucks or whatever. 
um, and the, the suckier the better. You are, that way, you, you are forever looking for that feedback. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> And, you know, I did it and I participated in this uh, Meet the Agents event. There were like 11 highly curated um, agents in my genre. And all of them said, you know, I can get you like a really good uh, advance from a major publisher. So I said, you know, if I'm going to get paid to sit out, maybe I will do that <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now, the book is going through like, I'm glad I did because they're, they're, they're making me do some major revisions and they're just upping the game a lot. So when that book comes out, it will have a major, like a charity angle for one's going to be like a medical charity. Another one's going to be empowering women. Like I'm, I do want to put the money back where it is. Mm -hmm. So the, the pot, I'm still on TV uh, on yep. shop HQ and I'm doing the million dollar hobbies podcast and the million dollar hobbies book. And, and my dream also is to have a, like a series of um, free webinars, not long, but just free webinars because with, 35 years of retail background because my company was in 89, but I remember I worked for other retailers before so that yeah. it's hard to collapse it into one hour interview. And yeah. um, I just think that, you know, the information that I have to share is still very relevant today. So, yeah. And you've got your finger on the pulse. You have the company, you are, you, you still, even though you've taken a little bit of a step back, you are still at the forefront of knowing what's working in industry, industry, you still have people reporting right, right. back to you, telling you right. what's working, what's not, what do we need to change? What is that customer feedback? So you are still very much a part of the industry. Well, yeah, well, my company's still growing. I know, uh, I you just say, you, that. you, so you, now you just take a step on back. Its own. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's like a machine. You know, I went to the golf club the other day and um, I tried to quit so many times and a, a very dear friend of mine who had retired like many years ago, I said, you know, I'm just, I just can't figure out how to shut off completely because I just so enjoy hearing from people, you know, from, I just, there, there's an energy about this and I'm going to really miss. And my friend said to me, you know what, Vic, you have built a giant snowball in the middle of the Ecuador, you know, Ecuador is hot. Yes. And, and snow. I was melts. just thinking, does that mean she's going to say you melt? Yeah, because you built this, you, you, you built this, it, it, that's an impossible thing to do. All you have to do now is roll it down the hill. And why would you quit? And I said, you know what, you might actually have some, some merit to that. So now I think I'm trying to, you know, find different ways to reach the younger generation of people like my daughter's age girls, mm -hmm. like a lot of them grew up with like mobile phones, like at their hips, like by the time they were 14, middle grade. So they don't know how to like navigate a map because they had a GPS. They well, can't read the time. Yeah. They can't read a clock. Yeah, exactly. they, they don't read the book. They, yeah, I mean, when I went to um, my daughter's school at UCLA is one of the, it is one of the toughest schools to get into. She's at UCLA. I went, I go over there and these girls are Googling how to use a laundry machine. And, I, and I'm like, there's like a start button here. That, that there's a, <laughs> That, you put the dollars in and you press yeah, go. Look at the thing. There was like a hole where you can put the thing and there's a start button. You know, so I, I feel like there is, um, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to um, be giving uh, sort of advice and criticism without sounding like I'm critical, kind mm -hmm. of, you know, I'm able to do that. So, yeah, that's my next thing. And um, I hope that, you know, all of you are going to come on my journey and, you know, come so my website right now has nothing to sell. That's the other thing. Like what happened I was, was- I was going to say that. There's there's nothing there. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, there's nothing. So it's by design. Um, we are bombarded with people telling you, buy this, buy that, here, this is free, that's free. So because my products are sold everywhere, like if you go to Shop HQ, there's product after product. You know, you go to all these places you can buy, where you can buy my products. So on my own website, I wanted it to be a hundred percent engagement site mm -hmm. where people can come in, chill out, talk to each other or talk to me. And if they got gripes or something, they can do that too. But I don't want to sell things like at this point, I don't need money. I don't need anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess I could have more, but I mean, you know, I live well below my means and um, you know, and I think I, I had a guest a couple of days ago, who, he's like a happiness guru. And he was telling me that research has shown after you make your first $75,000 a year, you pretty much can afford whatever you want. You can't go to better restaurants, better cars or whatever. I mean, unless you're really greedy. 
So everything over that is gravy. And I think I, I agree with him on that. Mm. And I have to tell you, I think I reached that point like 25 years ago. So, <laughs> so Did you find, yeah. ex- uh, look, no, I'm not even going to ask you that question because we've been talking for ages and I, I could swear I could talk to you for the whole rest of the day. I've got so many questions for you. But if people want to hear more about you, they want to learn more about you, not everybody can watch you on Hot Shop HQ, but we can right. head over to the Million Dollar Hobbies podcast. And yes. you, is your website Million Dollar Hobbies or is it Victoria Wick? VictoriaWick.com. And there is, um, if, they, if somebody wants to be a guest on my show mm-hmm. um, and you have a really unique story, mm-hmm. I'm very picky. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm very picky. You don't have to be a millionaire, but you just have to have an amazing story. Like a, I, I, I believe in power of stories. Mm-hmm. Then you can go ahead and apply to be a guest. And um, I am going to uh, mold in a lot of free things. Like I'm going to have like five, six little mini videos that you can, so, you know, cause I, you don't have to feel like you're taking a class yeah. on tips, you know, on social media, on, you know, guest podcasting on this. I mean, simple things like if you're doing podcasting, you know, lighting, the, you know, cause that's what we do really well, makeup and all that. Um, also, just you know how to deal with just a lot of little things that a small business needs to Mm -hmm. right now if you're a small business the one thing that I can guarantee you that you're going to go out of business eventually with is if you're not visible and you're in the you're the biggest secret in town yeah you're going to it's going to be a matter of time before you go out of business so how do you get visible how how do you get yourself relevant and elevate and amplify your message and and then you can reap the rewards so I have ways that I can do that. And I don't really feel great about charging money, just a, like a free couple of minute download. So, you know, you guys can come in. It's not all uploaded yet, but I'm going to kind of move that in because my site is not, it's not just for small business people. It's for everybody. Yeah. Like, you know, a lot of, so I kind of hesitated, um, you know, adding those things in. I, I'm still figuring out whether I should have a separate site or not, but I am going to eventually share my knowledge because it would just be a shame for me to die without sharing that. I was going to say, <laughs> so, I, you have so much to share, like yeah. start, start st- telling the world now. And thank you so yeah. much for sharing all of that today. And you know that it's important and you know that you've done a really great job at storytelling when an hour and 20 minutes later, we could continue <gasps> talking, but no way. I have taken that much of your time. So I'm going to say, thank you so much. I look forward to, I think we have to have you back again because we didn't talk about going, growing broke. We didn't talk about yeah, right. uh, mm-hmm. a whole, so many other things that I had written down to talk to you about because the story was just so powerful. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And um, until next time, I guess. Cool. Thank you. That was wonderful. I, as I said, I honestly, I looked at the clock and I was like, oh, I could let this poor lady go. <laughs> We've been talking for hours. That just seemed like there was like two... You know, that was that went way too fast. Yeah. I well, that's no what good conversation. That time. That's what good conversation yeah. does. I really appreciate well, thank it. Thank you so much. Yeah. So thank I hope I, I wasn't like rambling on or no, stuff, no, so. I was I was in the story. Trust me, if you were rambling, I would have cut you off. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, you know, it was um I just have so much like well, my career is so long. There were so many things I wanted to talk to you about. I've got like five things and we talked about two of them. So I think we'll have Mm -hmm. to have to revisit at some point. And I would love to talk to you about coming onto your podcast. I don't know if you knew much about me, but I was actually, um, I was homeless at 14 Mm -hmm. and had to basically look after myself. I finished school. I, through this random um, series of events, I actually finished my year 12 schooling when I was 15. And so at, at the age of 15, I had to leave like leave where I was living and I had to rent a, an apartment. And I remember saying to the landlord, can I even sign a lease at the age of 15? Right. No, you can't. <laughs> he was like, just pay the rent. I don't care. And so from there, just the story about how I was working for the government and I knew that if I wanted all the things I wanted, which were the same things that you wanted, I wanted to be able mm-hmm, to choose yeah. when I worked, what I did, yeah. who I got to help. It wasn't going to be working for the government and Then that started me to start my first e-commerce business back in 2007 Mm -hmm. and grew that to a multi award winning chain of stores, which I sold off in 2015. And now I help people to grow their businesses. Yeah, that's wonderful. No, just go. I'll put it on the, um, I'll fill out the form. Yeah, fill out the form. um, And I think what we'll do is I'm running like a few, I don't know, like the woman that's going to go up 
this coming week, I think I recorded her like March 17th. And she's a very good friend of mine, March 17th or something. So it is going to be a little while before it gets released. That's okay. But yeah, powerful stories. And um, my listeners are high caliber because they're like people who are already in my fold. And the it's interesting. I was on episode 10, I think. Some guy from New Zealand emailed me or, or contacted me for my little thing. So, you know, on, on LinkedIn. And he said, um, oh my God, he said like, you know, I don't know if you know uh, that you're like number 42 in New Zealand and I can't believe the, the, the caliber of guests you have on and do you only upload like once a week? And he was like going crazy. And I said, I didn't even know I was in New Zealand. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, said, the power I didn't of know the I was internet. in New Zealand. And I'm like, who are you? And I was like, why are they listening to me in New Zealand? Like, what's, mm-hmm. what's so special about my message? And he said, I think we have like a really hardcore, like, you know, a lot of women entrepreneurs, you know. And, they do. And they, There's they a really huge, resume. huge entrepreneurial yeah. co- community in New Zealand. Yeah. So, yeah, they were saying that. And I was like, well, that's crazy. Because I'm, uh, I mean, my first four was like a practice run. And then the next few were really great. And then I've got really big ones, like, you know, pretty much lined up the uh, coming up. But um, I'll have it yeah, in there. So, Look, I, I won't be offended if you say no. You, you know what oh, you no, want. No, to... no, not at all. Uh, what I want to say is I'm trying to I'm trying different things. Yes. And so I have a very good friend who runs a women's uh, networking organization in the U.S. It's, mm-hmm. it's a really nice prestige one. I mean, in fact, this 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 quarter, she's got Giada De Laurentiis on the cover. She's had like Gloria Gaynor. Um, Susan Lucci. I mean, you, anybody who's anybody, it's been on her cover. So she she runs this network, and she switched from celeb driven to c- celeb one month, and then like hardworking American the next month, celeb one month, hardworking American next month, and it's working out really well for her because like not everybody, you know. I mean, okay, great, they're celebs, but they're celebs. Like so, like that that hardworking American power story kind of works. It's it's enough to to keep people interested. The other thing I thought was really interesting too is um, I don't know why I did that, but I wanted to instead of having guest, 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 I wanted to have like a one that's solo. Yes, okay, that so made a huge solo. difference on my show. People loved. Can you can you believe it? So I uh, there's going to be a section that uh, there, when you fill out the form, there's a section that says which episode did you listen to? Mm-hmm. You know the one that most people listen to is yours. Yeah. And it was like, how to, how to handle difficult people like a boss. Mm -hmm. And it was like, just my whole theory is people that are happy got happier during COVID because they got to spend time with their family and all that. Yeah. And people that were nasty got nastier during COVID because they didn't have any friends. They didn't have anything to talk to. Yeah. And they were just no way to let their vent their frustrations. And and they got their happiness by making, putting people down and Mm. they didn't have that opportunity. So when you go back to work, it's just going to be kind of hell. So I went through why people are difficult, all this stuff. And so I thought, you know, so I'm actually going to retool my show. So I'm going to do a couple more, like at least twice a month, I'm going to do those kind of just a straight talk, you know, yeah. real stuff. So basically um, I am going to be looking for ordinary people. What I'm looking for in my show now is the future of Victoria Wick. Somebody who doesn't know that she has the potential yet, mm-hmm. but you know, just so, and they're hard to find because they're not discovered yet. They don't have huge businesses yet. And I think so, it's it's knowing people like me who are working with those people. That's how you're right. going to find them because they don't, they're not discovered yet. You don't know what they're thinking just yet. And right. yeah. it's, I, I'm, I'm like you, I say my superpower is being able to look at a business and usually within a couple of minutes, I can see where they should be and right. what they need to do to get there. And it sounds like and, you can do the exact yeah. same thing. Yeah. And, and, and the kind of problems they're going to run into, cause you can yeah. kind of protect, you know, the business model you, you've been there. So yeah, if you uh, fill it out, it's not a problem. It, so right now, like I'm, I don't want to be so heavy with um, people that are ultra successful. Yeah. I want, you know, somebody who has the potential to be there because I can almost, what I want to do eventually is to be able to diagnose someone's business. I mean, my friend and I actually have a, a TV show that we have, um, a concept for and that mm-hmm. is and i actually know that like kevin harrington those people so basically what they do in the shark tank is now become kind of cutthroat so 
you go on, they like it or they don't. It's very showy. Everything's kind of scripted. And I don't know if you know this or not, but even if they say I'm going to buy it, they don't buy it. Yeah. I've got a friend so, who, in Australia who was, she was successful on Shark Tank. Yeah. On so the Australian what happens version. is like, yeah, they, they'll, sometimes they'll knock you off, you yeah. know, with, with the product. I've got a guy over here that the Shark Tank bought it. They came in, it's, they, they have a little thing at the bottom saying everything is subject to, sub, you know, them due diligence. Numbers, yeah. Stuff. Well, so they did it. Then they didn't buy it. And they made then it there was a there was a new golf putter company that is oddly similar. <laughs> so, you know, that kind of stuff happens. So I think that what we were going to do is, because I know like, I mean, you know, like Wolfgang Puck, all these people personally, I, I think that what we were going to do is actually diagnose the problem and help them get the funding, it, like actually help them get help, like hook them up with a mentor or the money or whatever they need. So I love um, that that's idea. kind of in it. Yeah. That's kind of in the embryo stages too, but you know, that's what I'm working on a little bit now. So yeah, I'm just so glad that you, um, did you reach out to me or did I reach out to you? I can't no, remember. I reached out to you from the podcast guest because I okay. wanted to change up our format from being very much how to, to a yeah. lot more story driven. And mm-hmm. I just loved your story, but it, it's a completely different story. It's a completely different conversation that I thought we would have but I love it even more. Really? What did you think you were going to have? I didn't know. I just wrote some stuff down based on your bio. But the, that's the whole point of really good conversation is you can write the questions down, but a good conversation takes you down its own path. Yeah. So if you're looking for like really great guests, mm-hmm. um, you know, the thing I don't like about a lot of these podcast lists is that I it just seems like the same guests have gone around a lot in yeah. different places and they say the same things over time. So, I mean, I reject quite a bit of them, but um, I have, you know, the people that I've interviewed, I've got, um, you know, just a lot of people that I know that aren't going to be ever on a list and they, they just have some amazing stories. And I think the power of storytelling is, you know, that's what we all gravitate toward. Like, you know, I, I, what I did today is how to, but in a completely but, different way. Right. Yeah. And that's the power of storytelling because you are, they're learning how to. Yeah. So can and I reach learning. out to you and maybe you could think of a couple of people who would be great guests who have great Absolutely. stories. You tell me what you're looking for. And I, I mean, I've got everybody. I know I, everybody. I mean, Seriously. I would love to have that retail or e-commerce background because mm-hmm. that is so powerful because people can relate to, to where they're at. Um, but a good story is a good story. So I might have a little bit of a think and then I might drop you an email if that's okay. Yeah. And also think about like what's outside the box for you too. Yes. You know, like outside the box, passive income. There's a lot of different uh, ways you could, I think if you are a podcaster and you want to differentiate you from all the other podcasters and you want to stand alone, I think one way you do that is your guest lineup and the type of, I mean, today, oh my God, I interviewed, um, you should interview this guy. He was just so bright. What was his name? And his name is Brim, B-R-I-M. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll text him. Okay. Um, you got to be a really great interviewer though, because he, uh, first of all, I think he contacted me or uh, something happened. So anyway, I looked at his bio and I was like, seriously? Uh, but I'm really curious. I'm open-minded. And I was like, first of all, he looks really rough. So I thought, I don't know, but so I kind of sat on it for a while and uh, then I read his bio and his bio, in fact, I interviewed him this morning. It had, like, I'm going to tell you something. This bio had, okay, the, this is his bio. It's seven, eight pages long. Okay. And I'm like, who writes an eight page bio? They're single page typed, seven, eight pages long. When you read the bio, they're not fluff. They're all things he's done. Mm-hmm. And so he was a professional wrestler, a radio host, and a professional podcaster, actor, voice actor, author, musician, philanthropist, food critic, horror model, comic <laughs> book, and animated children's book, video game hero. And he's been on NBC, CBS, ABC, uh, The Ricky Lake Show. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. And so... I, I finally got him. I, I, I actually didn't intend to interview him today. I just wanted to talk to him. Mm-hmm. So I said, so like, how do you go from um, wrestler to, you know, comic book author? <laughs> I, I went through this whole thing. Do you know that the guy wrote 
what he did in the exact order he did it. And he said that it was just amazing. He said that if you're a wrestler and he was, he was apparently a pretty big time wrestler. I'm not in the wrestling world, so I didn't know, but you go from wrestler and you have a certain amount of fame and, you know, people recognize you. What's the natural transition from that? And that natural transition was like a voice, voiceover, voice actor, because people recognize you, your voice and you're screaming or whatever. So, and then, and then he goes from there on to podcasting, to writing a book. And he said like, and he owns a radio station. There's all these things he does. And um, when you look at what he's done, it, everything was, you know, and then he said, I was traveling to all these cities where I just saw the airport and the restaurant at the hotel. So he decided to kind of branch out, look at what food options they have. And th then he started doing a whole food show. So everything was kind of scripted out for him. And I mean, wildly successful. So, you know, a lot of times you don't, you know, and this is a guy I would have never normally had on, you know, normally, but if you talk about my show, taking your passion into a multi-million dollar business, I mean, he's really he, successful. He owns, his, yeah. you know, he, he owns several brands. Um, he, he's working on a film. He's doing this, he's doing that. And so I said, you know, Brim, you didn't just follow your passion. You followed your passion as your passion changed. <laughs> you know and he didn't he, get he it just, sounds like he didn't get caught up in the this is the this is the 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 regular path or this is the expected right, path right. he said mm -hmm. you know what I really love right now and then I'm going to follow mm -hmm. that and, and you know he's he's really bright he's very well to do I mean just really you would never think that when you when you talk to him but mm -hmm. you know I mean he said to me today nobody reads my bio because it's so long and you, you can't believe how many people just have not, you know, like no clue what they're doing. And, and I actually just plucked out things that just, just really struck out at me. I mean, he said that when he wrote his children's book, he put in where in the, in the children's, this is a comic book, a children's hero comic book. And in the comic book, there is hell and have, there is a hell, uh, which lives inside heaven and, you know, all these people are out there dining, eating their favorite food and all this stuff. And a lot of the food that he was talking about in this comic book actually shows up in his food, you know, the food network. So he's actually, he's very, very bright. He's actually planned out, like, you know, I was like, you know, all the things that you've done, it's all like no risk because he's actually laid it out, teed it up. Mm. But um, what I love about podcasting is you learn something every you know, I have 30 years experience and I've been at the top of the game. And I mean, a lot of the people that I interview, almost everyone, I think everyone so far, if you go there, they were my personal friends. And some of them have my personal friends for 20, 30 years. Okay, here's an example. I interviewed my dear friend, Michelle Lau. She's um, a QBC show host right now. She's one of the, their top shows. Mm -hmm. And I've known her. I mean, she's done shows with her. We've dined out together. We went to big parties together, all this stuff. I've known her for a long time. And I got her on, on my show and um, we were just chit-chatting and you know, just having a great old time. I haven't talked to her for a long time. And I forget what I said about, I, I said to her like, you know, why jewelry? Because, you know, if you're on TV, you could sell whatever you want. Why jewelry? And she says, well, you know, you knew I was blind. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, you didn't tell me that. She, so um, she's she, actually blind. She's basically legally blind. She's legally blind. So she can't see. She, she and can she's see a colors. TV shopping she see, network. Yeah, she can host. see colors, but. Yeah. So when you're on TV and you're on TV, like any like TV stations, they have, they give you the spec sheets and they tell you, you know, how many stones and, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's all sitting there and you have to like go through this and the, the producer's telling you, oh, no, you got the wrong, you know, that you have to know country of origin for every single stone in your thing. Well, and if you go through 16 items, the spec sheet pack is this, this big and you have to like, just be on it. Well, Michelle can't read that. Uh, she can't actually see the jewelry either. Yeah. So, so um, she said to me, you know, I love jewelry and I was never going to have anything interfere with what I want to do in my life, including my sight. And she didn't go overnight blind. I mean, she actually had an accident. There was a whole, she goes over how she fell and all that. 
And she said, you know, I can't drive. Um, I haven't driven for 30 years. And, but I didn't want anyone to define who I am. I didn't want it to feel sorry for me. I didn't want people to give me a job because, you know, I'm a, like a, you know, charity case or anything. So, you know, that was not an issue for her. It shouldn't be an issue for anybody else. So the millions of people that have watched her for 25 years on TV never knew this part of her. And so she said, you know, she kind of started to talk about this because she wanted to be an advocate for people who think they can't do something, mm-hmm. either because they have uh, the imaginary or real disability, or a lot of people don't even have a disability. It's just in their mind. They in think the they can't do that because I'm not poised or I'm not whatever. So she said, you know, hey, you know, uh, and then afterwards, she said to me, I don't know why I said that. She said, you know, if you want to just cut all that out, you know, you can just cut it out or we can just re-record. And I said, Michelle, are you kidding? No, that's like the best that's, part of this That's whole the best thing. part. Yeah. So I didn't, I left it there, but I mean, so many of my, the, the people that I've interviewed were people that I've known personally for a long time. The woman that's going to come up next week. I've known her for probably 30 years and she lives literally like four blocks from me. And, you know, we hung out, our kids know each other, all this stuff. And um, she talked about skincare. And I said, you know, Celeste, like your whole background is tech. She, you know, ran the compact, like Hewlett, Hewlett Packard's one of their biggest divisions. She, you know, she did all this stuff. And I said, why skincare? Like, what happened? How do you go from like computers to tech? And, uh, and then she told me that she was born with a genetic disorder that starts eating up her organs since she was born. <laughs> I had yes. no clue about that either. And that she had always been extremely concerned about immune systems, medical technology, and she's been gathering data on, that's how she got into tech is, is gathering data. So now her skincare is the only skincare in the world that actually delivers skincare almost like a dose Mm-hmm. like a do- like a prescribed dose like so she has all the data on your skin and so she knows when you buy her skincare what your skin's going to look like at three o'clock in the afternoon versus six o'clock in the at night and they give you nothing more and nothing less than exactly what your skin needs at that moment right. so it's a it's a very expensive delivery program so you know all these people that i've known for years and years and years. And I'm learning because, you know, we don't sit there and talk about these things for 30 minutes at a time. When we go out to lunch, hey, how, you know, how is business? How's the kids? Blah, 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 how's the grandkids? Yeah. And, and then yeah. you got six other people sitting there and you're on the phone. So what I love about podcasting is like how much I learn from every guest I've had on. I was like, I can't believe I didn't know that. I, I can't believe like, that's amazing. You know, like, so this guy Brim today, he, um, I said, you know, people say like new and improved. And I said, when I, the first time I ever heard it uh, in school, I said, how could something be improved and new at the same time? And then he started laughing. It was so funny. He started laughing. He's like, you know, I never thought about that, but if it's new, you shouldn't, you couldn't be improved. Right. And I go, right, exactly. So like, or if it is improved, it's already new. Right. The fact that it's not the same as what it was. So I said, well, well, yeah. And I said, I don't understand. Like, and so it's English is my second language that always bothered me. And he says, like, now you told me that it bothers me because I've never heard anybody say that, but it is true. So he was like going over, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I think he said, yeah, I think I'm going to tweet that one out because that's kind of like an oxymoron, but yeah, we learn something, you know, every day. So that's what I like about it. And I get to choose, I get to shape the, the discussion on, you know, where the brand is going and all that. And, you know, right now, really, it's just reaching out to all the people because back in 89, 90, um, our contract didn't, you know, they, not, nobody had internet back then. Mm-hmm. So they had a clause and it's in, in my contract, they had a clause that said electronic retail. Well, because there, there was no internet, there was no wireless, there was nothing. So years later, when my contract came up for renewal, they refused to use, uh, redefine that word. And they said the electronic meant anything that uses electronics, right, to create a sale. Mm-hmm. So Were they thinking they t- faxes or something? Or was that, was that what the concept was yeah. behind that word? Well, because they were on TV, but I think later on they used that to lock out some of their very big guests from the internet sales as yeah. well as internet activity. So like when I left, I mean, I should have 15 million people on my social media, but when I left, they owned all those names and they wouldn't let me have them. So now I'm trying to gather those people back. Not See, there's another whole story we could have. 
yeah all the, <laughs> all the things not to do I mean no, I, but I even give you I guess even the importance of you owning your customers like that is that's yeah, the epitome yeah. of that conversation is if you let whether it's social media whether it's another brand if you let them have your customers then when you want to go and do your own thing when you're when you want to progress, when you want to change that path, just like Broom did, you want them to come with you on the journey. But if someone else yeah, owns yeah. them, you can't take them on the journey. Well, the, the, here's a, here's my big thing when I speak about the success and failures is never, ever build your entire castle on somebody someone else's, else's land. land. Yep, I and agree. And I ended up doing that on HSN involuntarily Um and I'm very fortunate that I have such a humongous business that has lasted for this long because it won't take me that long to get them into my fold. Yeah. Because my customers are actually looking for me. Yeah. So, you know, it's just an inconvenience right now. And I'm, I'm going to be able to get that. But if you were a, some, you know, if you were somebody like you who just worked the last five, 10 years and you have, you know, two, 300, 400,000 people, and then you lose it all in one day, that's a, that's devastating. Mm. You know, I'm at the end of my career, so I don't really need any of that. So, you know, it's there. I mean, there were quite a few lessons when you when you're talking like, as you said earlier, when you get to seven figures, when you get to eight figures. That the mistakes can be so costly that it's you really have to know what the heck you're getting into. So, yeah. you know, and there I mean, eight figures and beyond is um, it's a very select group of people, especially for women. Mm. And um, it's, you know, we're, we're talking, that audience would be talking about something very different. It's yes. really about scaling and all the other pieces, which, you know, we didn't want to get into today on this because I think, I think we had a really enjoyable conversation and I'm glad that it didn't come out to be too preachy. Like, no, you know, no, not at all. Like, as I said, the no. story, the story clearly just flowed because we talked for ages and we're still talking. We're nearly I at know, two I hours. Know, I have to, no, I have to let you go because I know how valuable yeah. your time is. So thank you so much. We've probably got uh, four weeks before this one goes live, but I, in the meantime, I'm going to send you an email next week, if that's okay. And I'm yes. going to go listen to these podcasts because now I want to know all about Celeste. And was it Jamie, Jamie Lau? Uh, Michelle, Lau. Michelle, Michelle Lau. Lau. You know, I, I'd be more than happy to send you to her. Um, Michelle is uh, amazing. I mean, well, actually listen to her. And yes, if you I'm going to listen to them. Yes. yes. If you want to have her, I can I can send you over. Um, so there's a lot of people. Oh, Celeste is not up yet. Um, oh, Celeste so is not up, up yet. for okay. a while. Uh, there's a lot of people that aren't up yet that, okay. that I've recorded. Well, you I'm going to go and subscribe yeah, because there's a lot. Yeah. If you can subscribe, you know, do support whatever the, the and I also do a lot of uh, things on my Instagram and, and uh, Facebook. I do different things because mm-hmm. my customers who follow me on Instagram is different than, you know, whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, I have a lot of people that if you want to, that's just the right fit. You yeah. know, uh, Michelle is another one. She doesn't have anything to sell because she's on QVC. So uh, by contract, they but can't the, sell anything. The story is what I want to hear. And that's exactly what you need. You don't want somebody yeah. to come on your show and sell their books and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you want people to just share their story. And yeah. um, the other thing great about Michelle too, is like she comes with that whole QVC tagline as well. You can tag her. Mm-hmm. So, um, but she's a, she's a real sweetheart. I mean, she's, she's on vacation. I feel like anybody who knows you must be amazing though. Because good people <laughs> hang around with good people. Yeah, you know, I have a lot of acquaintances, mm-hmm. but the few people that I call friends, I've known them for a very long time. I do separate acquaintance from friends because yeah. a lot of people who are acquaintances, they're, you know, I, there are certain things that's, you know, their business and I don't really talk to them a whole lot. But people that are really good friends of mine, they've been with me through my whole journey. Mm-hmm. a long long time so they've known me when I just had absolutely nothing to and, and they've had nothing yeah so you know we have a, a very different kind of a bond and so we do each other favors we still check up on each other almost daily and you know a lot of times we can't talk to each other but we'll check check say, hey, yeah you, know, you check yeah. doing you know uh, text them back and forth so yeah so you know and the other thing is I was I believe that you know my dad always said Karma is real and karma always comes back to you with interest. Oh, I believe that too. So good yeah. karma comes back with interest and bad karma definitely comes back with interest. So definitely, yes. you know, anything you do, like if you help out a homeless person, 
you know, you, you can go through, I mean, there are 10,000 of them in San Diego. You can go through them. And, oh, are you in San Diego? Mm -hmm. That's my home away from home. My mom's from San really? Diego. Where, where yes. is she? Where is she in San Diego? Oh, no, no. She lives in Australia now, oh, okay. um, but she was from La Jolla. And oh, yeah, so not too far from me. I'm, yeah, I'm, one at, of my, no, Rancho, I'm in Rancho Santa Fe, so it's right. Oh, so one of my best friends lives in La Mesa. Okay. okay. And one of, um, well, one of our plans was to buy our next piece of property in San Diego. So, oh, but COVID has kind of now. ruined it. Yeah. Yeah, it has. But I mean, the thing is, if you have, uh, if you, you know, help out a homeless person, or many of them, they may not even remember who you are. They, they may never even know, you know, cognizant enough to ever pay you back, mm. but you will get helped when you need it at some point, just out of the blue, somebody, something or someone will be there to help you. Yeah. And it, it may not be money. It could be just a little thing. It could just be a piece like of advice. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe just meeting us right now, you yeah. know, like you, you you're going to help me and I'm going to help you. So you got to be open-minded. You always have to be a great person because otherwise, you know, it could be a really long day in a very, very nasty world. <laughs> so, you know, so I, I believe that every person who comes to my life is, is a gift. Um, and I think that's a very Asian um, philosophy. Mm -hmm. So it's up to you to make the best of it. And um, so, you know, I've, I've done that pretty much my whole life. And I, I'm a huge connector of people. I love to connect, you know, the right people with the right, you know, right events. And, you know, so that's, it's usually good. So. Well, you have been you know, my gift today. Thank you. I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Too. So I'm going to send you, send you that email and mm -hmm. we will, we'll, I'm sure we'll be in contact. I have just loved talking to you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Listen to uh, Michelle. And if you like yes. her, I'll send you, um, I'll send her over. And also um, when, when this thing goes live, just mm -hmm. let me know, because whatever you're doing on your social media, yes. I will tag, you know, I will tag team so we can get some awesome, um, a little bit of a lift together. Okay. Well, thank you so thank much, you. my dear. Have, Have a, a great, great rest of your day. E is it evening or are you there? Oh, no, no, no. 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Well, have okay. a great day then. Thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Bringing Business to Retail podcast. You can find all of the show notes over at selinanight.com. If you found something that you heard today particularly useful, I'd love it if you could leave me a review on iTunes or Stitcher. And of course, feel free to share this episode with someone that you think could benefit by listening to it. Want more retail biz strategies? You can watch the Bringing Business to Retail TV show where each week I'll answer a question or provide you with a simple, actionable retail biz strategy that you can implement in your business right away. If you have a question or a guest, I'd love to hear from you. Drop my team an email at podcast at and I'll see you on the next episode. Have a great week.